All right, I'm live with who? Yeah, I know everybody can see me, but I can't see Sue, so. Okay, so I just did. <laughs> You're not, this ain't working, man. You're not popping up with my thing. What's that mean? I sent the request. Okay, so what? It says go live with S Bird. There, I hit go live. It says Sue Bird is unable to join. Yo, man, get your shit together. This ain't my fault. says you can't join. No luck. Sorry. Unbelievable. <laughs> Yo, that wasn't my fault. Okay. You know what the best part is? No, no. one believes you. No, that's serious. No I one took a, I, believes I you. Look, you have, there's 830 people right now teaching you how to use Instagram and you still can't figure it out. It doesn't matter because every time I punched in, it would say. I've now it, watched you with would, Stewie. You had to it, have a reschedule. It was super with Rebecca, unable. you couldn't flip the camera. Your There's a common denominator up. here, buddy. As soon as your name came up, it said unable to join. There's a so common denominator. 
Common denominator. No. Seriously. So hey, how's it going? I'm right here. How's it going? Let's not I'm, talk I'm, about technology. We we already everybody already knows. Yeah, I got it. Ooh. I see a cherry at the bottom. It's Manhattan time. It's only it's only Tuesday. <laughs> so what? Is there are days of the week you're not allowed to have one? I'm just, I don't know. Try to keep a normal schedule. Something. Yeah. I guarantee you one thing. This ain't going to last four hours. You're right. You're not, that, you're not that interesting to talk to. I know. I don't have that much to say. Yeah. <clears throat> so what's the point? What's. What's the point when you guys do these things? Like, what are you trying to, I can't, uh, I can't, uh, I What's can't what? figure out. I know you think it's dumb. Why, why it's so, why it's so, uh, why people want to be in other people's conversations? <laughs> it's a, uh, well, I mean, it's pretty Tell obvious. Me the I think. To that. Huh? You don't get interviewed on ESPN. You don't get interviewed on SNY. You don't get interviewed by all these people and, and people listen to what you have to say. It's the same thing. You're just able to do it on a, a chiller level with some different people. And I think people are interested in that. I know, but when I'm getting interviewed by ESPN, I don't look at the screen and have people talking to me and asking me questions while I'm having an interview. But right now you can't get interviewed <laughs> by ESPN. Well, you can, but not. Not normally. If you got ESPN, if you had to do an ESPN interview right now, I bet it would be like a Zoom link, and you would have to look at yourself. So you just gotta go with it. It's pandemic life. Yeah, well. I, Clearly, I, I, I mean, you're drinking Manhattans at six o'clock on a Tuesday. It must be pandemic life, unless that's just how this team made you feel this year. <laughs> no, I did the same thing Monday, and I do the same thing Wednesday. So the fact that it's Tuesday has nothing to do with it. <laughs> I'm just messing. So what's up? How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing yeah. great. As much as you can be. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Everybody's safe, healthy. Everybody's safe and healthy. Good. Yeah. What's up with your workouts? What are you doing? What are you doing to pass the time? <clears throat> I mean, I work out. It's just, uh, you know, creatively. It's getting a little more normal, like more into like it feels normal. But uh, early on, I had to get real creative. And then I ordered like a bunch of equipment. Like I didn't have things like stuff that's easy to do in the house. Like a TRX is really easy to have in the house. I didn't have that. We didn't have a Peloton, so we got one of those. So now it's like there's some form of normalcy. We, we run outside. My sister just got a hoop in her driveway. Big news for me. Huge news. I haven't been able to like, I actually do like, have you ever seen the home court app? Home court? Yeah, 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 I remember. I remember seeing that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, full disclosure, I'm an investor. It's actually not why I'm talking about it. It's great for kids. It's great for adults. For the adults, like like for a, a professional player, like anything, if you do it enough, it's going to get you – it's going to, like, give you a good workout. So I do all the ball handling on there. I mean, it gets me good. How it's, long? It's, you, they're only, like, a minute. So it's almost like you're in, like, an interactive video game. And it's only, like, a minute long. But if you do them consecutively or whatever – you can make it a workout. And that's the only time I've touched the ball. I have not shot on a, like a hoop, like a real hoop. I couldn't even tell you in a long time. They like tied up the nets in Greenwich. So one day I, I, I went out there, there was nobody in this park. The nets were tied up. And it's funny because you like somebody walking by is not gonna understand. I'm a professional basketball player and I'm working on at the time, I was, like, kind of working on, like, how I'm going to go off pick and rolls just to get, like, my body moving in that way. So I'm, like, I felt like <laughs> – I'm not even going to quote this movie. I, I was coming off – like I was, like, above the rim. I was, like, playing without a, without a hoop in that movie. That guy plays without a hoop. Anyways, so I was, like, practicing all the moves, and I would literally just throw it off the backboard, right? Because I didn't want to take a real shot, and then it get caught up there. I was just, like – I would go to shoot. I would just throw it off the backboard. And some, like, county, not county, like, town park and rec person came, like, driving up. I was like, <laughs> I was like, I'm not out here, like, playing. I'm just, you know. So just, in this, in this that virtual was early world, on, though. What? In, this, in this virtual workout world that you live in, you actually have, like, ups. You actually leave your feet. <laughs> yeah. I was, like, pretend, I was shooting layups. But when I would get there, this actually was more realistic. I would just miss it. <laughs> 
What was, yeah, what was realistic about it? The miss. <laughs> you know, million dollar move, 10 cent finish. That's me. Two feet it in. I think I shoot like 50%. Are you working out? What's your deal? All those Manhattans. Yeah. It's like every day. Okay. It's been really good. I mean, it gives you something to do. It's like you look you have something to look forward to. You know? Yeah. You get up, you go work out, come back, have some breakfast, read, drive up to the office, sit there, watch film on your iPad or computer work go downstairs and yeah you can't get in the weight room you can't get in the training room you can't get in anywhere so oh, you can't like, even so you can go to work you can go up to school but you can't go in the weight room no everything's locked up you can just go in your office yeah that's your little it's like your little man cave now well no i mean like if sarah and cd uh or yeah, like, is up there mm -hmm. we all sit in our own offices and we talk like on the phone or something. <laughs> you FaceTime? <laughs> yeah, we all get on the screen and we talk to each other. Yeah, Sometimes just set up a Zoom call. call. There you go, yeah. Zoom call. Yeah, we do a Zoom call. But sometimes, you know, if the, if the volume is wrong, you just kind of stick your head and just yell louder and they can hear you, <laughs> you know, so that's about it. That's crazy. That's about it. Wild um, times. So uh, a couple things, what's the, um, What's the scoop with the summer? Are you guys playing or what? What's the deal? <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know. That's the scoop. I think we're in the same, sadly, like the same boat as everyone else. I mean, I don't, I don't, like, I really believe we're so not, not even a hint, we not even a hint, nothing, not even like a. It's the same that, honestly, it's the same you see on TV or you read about, you know, first of all, I don't think, and this is what I will say, I don't think anything can happen without like rapid testing some sort of rapid testing where and this was in an actual article for the nba but it's the same for us like where we're not buying them and taking them away from people in need or from like the general population it can't be like that it has to just be like Yeah, it said you had a bad connection there. No, nice try. <laughs> See, just telling you, I got my I'm shit sure. together right here, man. Your your stuff is all screwed up. Okay. <laughs> See, this looks like a bad foreign movie. First, you move your head, say something, and then three seconds later, words will come out. See, that was you, like five minutes ago, but I didn't say anything because I was like, I'm not gonna. He's already like put himself out there. I don't want to make him look older than he already looks. Oh, okay. <laughs> And you're somehow, still you're still like off. <laughs> yeah. Somehow I knew this. Would Anyways, come back. no, I don't have an answer somehow for you. Do you. When are you guys gonna play next year? Eventually. Okay. <laughs> good answer. That's about as good as it's gonna get. Eventually. Uh, no, I had a moment today where I was like, like this this is this is not ending anytime soon. <laughs> like basically, so I live in a building, right? So it's obviously a lot of shared spaces. And I went to like touch the, like the doorknob of the, uh, the trash room. And I immediately like noticed, I like took note of the fact that I had just touched a doorknob that wasn't mine. And that's when it hit me where I was like, is that feeling gonna, and that's been like that for, for like at least a, over a month now. Right. And I was like, is that feeling gonna leave? No, that feeling is not gonna leave until we have like medicine, you know, vaccines, all that stuff. So I don't feel like we're, none of us are going to feel normal for so long. That was my first, like, <gasps> moment. Where all of a sudden I was like, oh, my hand's contaminated. I need to wash this immediately. Do you find yourself when people are walking towards you, you start walking away? I mean, yeah, I do, for sure. Yeah. Luckily, like, there's not a lot of people walking outside. Although today, I'm in Connecticut, too. Today's gorgeous. Gorgeous. I know. I, know. Oh, I was like, once it gets warm, it's going to be so hard not to be outside. I know. I saw more people on the road today than I have combined yeah. all this time. All Do you go time. out besides when you go to work? Uh, you know, the golf courses are open if you just want to go for a walk and stuff. So We can play, right? Yeah, we've done that.
And you got to carry. It's funny. Yeah. There's places that you, uh, everybody gets their own cart, right? Oh, you get carts. So it looks like, you know, what it looks like it looks like one of those go kart things, you know, where you go to. There's all these carts flying around all over the place, and yeah. I got a feeling when this comes back, mm -hmm. everybody's going to want their own cart, their rides, because <laughs> you play like this. You don't have to wait. It. You have to drop anybody off. You have to wait for them to hit. You just yeah. go. So and it's great if you don't like your partner, you just go hit your ball and leave. You know, <laughs> and say, yo, I'll see you up at the green. Screw you. So you know, that, that that'll. That'll be the one good thing out of this? Yeah, that'll be the one good thing out of this. <laughs> the one good thing? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what about... Uh, what about this other stuff that you're doing? Um, uh, this what, what, what did you end up doing with the, um, the last dance? What was that all about? What do you mean? What do you mean? Yeah, like I, I was watching something else, so I recorded it, and then I came back to it, and you popped up, and they were asking you questions about, oh, uh, talk about John Starks' dunk and all this and that. Yeah. What was um, what was what was your role in that? No, no, no role. I think um, whether it was the people from The Last Dance or ESPN, I can't remember now. I think they just kind of sent out to like a bunch of athletes, like, hey, if you have a Bulls memory, right? Like they just wanted. So I, I guess mine was good enough to make the cut. And I got, I got a notification like a week ago, like, hey, you're going to be in next week's, you know, Save the Last Dance. Because they've been having like random people, athletes, actors, just kind of tell a bull's memory. And little did I know it like fit perfectly into the storyline because they went into detail about that series. And it's funny because I said this, I was on a recap show also, I said this, it's like, I was 12, you know? So for all the people who are set, I got crushed, and I was telling uh, your son last night, killed on Twitter for saying that John Starks dunked on him. Um, so I'm trying. Yeah, so for the 12-year-old me, that dunk was like, as a Knicks fan, that dunk was like, that's all we have yeah, in, in Knicks amazing. history. It was a huge dunk. And 12-year-old yeah, me also had no idea that he went to Atlantic City and like that whole storyline. I had yeah. no idea. Like, why would I know that? I wasn't, like, tuning in to the talking heads at that point. Or maybe, like, like my dad listening to, like, you know, Mike and the Mad Dog or whatever it was back then. Um, so I had no idea. So seeing that in this documentary was the first time I knew that whole storyline. Obviously, later on, I knew um, that, you know, the rumors that that's why he retired or, you know, this is maybe why his dad got murdered. I personally don't think those, those are true, but I know that storyline. I didn't know the Atlantic City thing. Like yeah. that was mind blowing. So it was cool to watch. That's what's been so great about the documentary, seeing stuff like that. Yeah, uh, you know, people have their own perception of what you know because you're in the public, uh, you're in the public eye a lot. But people have their own perception of how they want you to be and what they would expect you to be. Mm -hmm. So that whole idea that he could go out, play golf all day, then go to Atlantic City then come back and get 35 or 40 the next day. They would go, how can you go to, how can you go to gamble the night before a game? Well, that's, you couldn't do that, but he can. Michael Jordan can. <laughs> so they don't want to, they don't want to admit that. Yeah. He could have got there. Like I, I'll give you, I'll give you an idea mm -hmm. how those people, you need to start thinking of those people, anybody that's watching, you need to start thinking of those people in a different way than you think of normal people. So whatever you would think a normal person would do, that you would go, I can't believe you did that. These other people, that doesn't apply to them. So matter of fact, down by where you live, Gil Goodrich, if you know the name, he played for UCLA. Mm -hmm. They won a national championship. Then he played for the Lakers, and the backcourt was Gil Goodrich and Jerry West. Mm -hmm. Two stories about that. One, when they asked, when you and D were on the team at, at, at UConn, they asked me, how would you describe Sue and Diana as a backcourt in college? I said, what's well, like Gail Goodrich and Jerry West? And one of the young writers thought Gail Goodrich, like. Was a woman? Yeah. <laughs> and I go, no, it's Gail Goodrich, you know? It's like, he's all about it. I said, forget it. I don't, I'm not explaining that to you. So anyway, so Gail Goodrich is 
You need some. You need some updated uh, comparisons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to catch some You have to work on that. Material. Yeah, yeah. I need. I need either older writers or I need new material. One or the other. So, new material. anyway, he lives. He lives down your way, and we played golf one time. Mm -hmm. And I was asking him about Will Chamberlain, right? So I was asking him about Will Chamberlain, and he said, "What was unbelievable was." I thought you lived in a nice neighborhood. What the hell is going on? Honestly, there? not to cut you from your story, these sadly, ever since this yeah. COVID stuff, the yeah. ambu it's like crazy the amount of sirens, and I'm always just like, dang, like yeah, what's that? I it's know. crazy because Greenwich got hit pretty hard. I mean, it was a lot of New York City people coming yeah. back, you know, but the Greenwich Hospital is, I think, like one of the. Anyway, so that's what that is. It's kind of like a regular thing. Yeah, it's really sad. It's I really know. Sad. I know. Anyways, continue. Gail Goodrich, you were playing golf. So we're playing golf, and I asked him about playing for the Lakers, you know? Mm -hmm. He was on that team that they won 33 straight. So we're talking, and I said, what was, what was it like, you know, playing with Will and all that? And he made a great comment. He said, you know, Will used to show up at games, 7 o'clock game, let's say. Mm -hmm. So he'd walk in at 6 o'clock. And he'd have a t-shirt on, muscle, like muscle yeah. tee, shorts, and flip-flops, because he had just spent all day playing beach volleyball <laughs> in Los Angeles on the beaches. Then he'd show up and he'd go, all right, guys, let's do this. And he would get 30 and 20. Yeah. So no, some people can that do that. Is, and at, in, in, in Barcelona, at the Olympics, guys would talk about that the day before a game or if they played a night game, the during the game, those guys will play golf. So people should not look at that and go, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Those people are not human. They're superhuman. Yeah. I mean, but some of it is like, I do think that, I mean, you know, the commercial with Kobe Bryant and Kanye West, if you haven't seen that, there's a chance you haven't, you need to like YouTube it immediately after this. It's like this funny thing where Kobe's kind of giving this like, how to be great speech, almost like as if he's, uh, you know, one of those gurus. Yeah. And anyways, there's a banter. And at one point, just go watch it. I'm not going to ruin it for you. But the, the final line is something about the same animal and the different beast. The thing is, like athletes, when you're great like that and you have, there's like a mentality there, that mentality doesn't stop on with basketball, right? Like it goes into all these other aspects. So to your point, it's like Michael Jordan, he had to like get – I don't know, like that's how he operated, what you saw on the yeah. court. It, that doesn't just stop in your regular life. But then right. there are other things too, like when he was talking about, um, oh, that book, the Jordan Rules book and how all this negative stuff and whatever. And I said this the other day, it's like, if you haven't been on a basketball team or you have, I should say, let me rephrase. You have not been on a basketball team, a real one. If you have not had teammates fight, like whether it's verbally or physically, you have not been on a basketball team if a teammate hasn't said something like, yo, tell her not to shoot. <laughs> hey, you, don't shoot. You have not, like, I, and I'm not saying this to be like, this is not a disrespectful thing. Many times in games, I've had to go to a coach during the game and be like, hey, you need to get so-and-so out. Because when you're a player, there's a different feel there, you know, like you can just tell something. That's not, like, the guy in the, who wrote the book or whoever read the book and took it this way, took that, those things that Jordan was doing as like negative. Like that happens all the time. These are normal right. things. Right. So that was interesting too, to see people's responses to it. I think athletes or basketball players were probably like, no big deal. Like that happens all the time. Yeah. I think sometimes they forget these, these guys are workers. They're coworkers. Yeah. And you even, you know, you personally in your own job, wherever you're working, you have disagreements with people you work with. Mm -hmm. You know, that that's what these guys are doing. Have you ever you know? had to tell a player not to shoot? Hell like, yeah. Can you give an example? Name names. No, I don't want to name names because that <laughs> wouldn't be fair. Okay. Uh, but I did do this one time. We had a kid that swore she was a great three-point shooter, but she wasn't. But she would make just enough to make to make herself or th think that she was mm -hmm. so one day we were practice and she catches the first pass launches one up there doesn't go in i don't say anything now we go down we're on d blah 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 we come down pass pass she catches it second pass launches another one this mm -hmm. is i said that's it i can't let it go any further you know so i stopped 
And I gathered everybody around. And I said, uh, all right, listen. It's your stuff. Mm -hmm. So anyway, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. So, so I said, if we needed a three with one second left to win a game, who would shoot it? And they went, um, she would, Kalina. Let's say Kalina Lewis. Okay. Oh, guys, you just give away the year. You just well, gave away the year. She was there four years. You just so, gave away a four-year span. So it's four-year span. So <laughs> I said, if if we had to win a game with one second left and we had three, who would shoot it? They go her. I go, okay. What if uh, what if she had like the flu that day and she couldn't play? Well. It would be, let's just say, Bria Hartley. Okay, Bria Hartley. And what if Bria had sprained her ankle in the in the third quarter? More uh, more information has been given. So anyway, Believe we went. Bria. We went through. We went through like four players, and finally, I turned to the kid and I said, "Did anybody mention your name yet?" I said, "The point being is, everybody on the team understands who the really good three point shooters are on our team, mm -hmm. and who's not." You've told me this. <laughs> Good story. Good story. So anyway, tell me, uh, tell me this, uh, this Instagram show that you have. What's it called? A touch above? A touch more? What is it? You know, it's a touch more. Yeah, it's a touch more. What's that mean? Because one day, more? well, I was about to tell you. One day I was, um, you know, it was early in the pandemic, but it was still like, I think early in the pandemic is when I was like, kind of like eating whatever I wanted, drinking whatever I wanted. Now I'm definitely back to nor like back to like a normal routine. But early on, I think everybody was just kind of like, ah, and I was getting in the shower and I was like, do I look different? And Megan said something to the effect of like, no, you look just, like there's like a touch more. And I was like, excuse me. <laughs> so. We at first were doing something called a wind down, but there's actually other people who are doing that. And so we decided to change it to that, to a touch more. There was a lot of fan input, which we appreciated. People um, voted for a touch more. So we stuck with that. And it's just us kind of on there. It started with just us on there, like playing music, talking, with, reading the comments, kind of like interacting. And now it's become more like things start to develop. We actually have like ongoing segments and like we have guests now. And we kind of put them through a rapid fire, which I have a lot of fun with. Um, D's was like an anomaly for sure. That mm -hmm. went a little long. But I mean, that's what it is. When, when D and I get together and then me, D, Megan, and Penny, um, you know how, I mean, you've, you've witnessed it. Actually, Mike and I were talking about this last night. It's like we go to dinner and then dinner, you know, it goes to three hours and four, before you know it, it's like you're closing down the place. You've just been catching up for six hours probably telling yeah. the same stories like you just told me <laughs> and like repeat, you know, but it's fun. And that's what that was. So it was really fun. You're going to be a guest on it, right? I'm doing a your show. So now you got to do mine. A touch more, huh? Yep. Maybe, maybe Megan was being kind. Maybe it was more than just a touch. Um, Did so... you just hear that part about I'm doing your show. So you have to do mine. He's going to. Do you no, stay I'm, up that late? It's nine o'clock on Saturdays. Nine o'clock on Saturdays? I'll do it. Okay. I'll do it. You could probably use you could probably use the, yeah. the change in scenery. Oh, uh, I was gonna say we could probably use your followers to jump on. That would really help us. You should. Well, if they all jumped on at the same time, uh, <laughs> they could all fit on one couch. Um <laughs> <laughs> uh, what does uh what does the whole USA basketball thing look like? I mean, you're like the special assistant to the advisor of the assistant advisor of the committee. So you tell me. I have no I'm, idea. I'm a special assistant to the, I'm a special advisor. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the advisor to the assistant to the advisor. Uh, the advice I gave recently was I have I hope no, you watch The Office. <laughs> I have no freaking, yeah, I have no freaking clue. That was my advice as a special advisor. 
Yeah, I mean, nobody does. But that's the thing. It's like, so we have calls. All, do I don't you know. USA basketball wise, I don't know. I haven't do had. Think there's even go, do you think there's even going to be an Olympics next summer? Man, you're at, you're talking to me like I'm Dr. Fauci. I don't know. Hey, by the way, by the way, he's coming on as a guest. On your show? Yep. <laughs> Let me guess. You like have a buddy that you played golf with that knows him from back in the day. No, just call him and he's a little just Italian guy. Him. I'm a little Italian guy and we're good to go. Okay, perfect. Um, we're not even going to talk about the virus because he, that's all he talks about. Okay. We're going to talk about growing up Italian. He's from the same area in Italy that well, I don't am. Give, don't give it away. He played you, basketball. You already gave the tease. Now you're just giving it away for free. No, I'm not giving it away. I'm not giving you the info. Anyways. Um, no, Olympics, again, I, w I want it to happen. I hope it happens. Obviously, we have way more time to figure it out till then versus, like, the WNBA season. But the way it feels, mostly for the WNBA because it's so close, but even for the Olympics, it's just going to be, you know, the, the – the minds get together and they come up with a plan and a contingency plan. And if by this day plan, and if by that day plan, and I feel like as you go, it just, it's just, you're constantly moving with it, with the information, with the, you know, hopefully like the scientific stuff that comes about medical things, whether it's again, medicine, vaccine, and then we'll just all move with that. And, and, and as we go, we'll know and we know, I think the same way that sports kind of started this, right. A lot of people didn't take it seriously until the NBA got canceled. And then it was mm -hmm. like, oh, man. So the same way sports started it, I think sports is going to end it. Sports with fans is going to end it. Sports what do you mean? without fans, because I think sports without fans might happen way earlier. And then that's like a whole financial, does it make sense, yada, yada thing. But sports with fans, a sporting event that has fans attend, will be the, will be the mark of the end of this pandemic. In my uh, professional opinion. <laughs> I do have a doctor in my family, so, you know. Yeah. It trickles down. Yeah. Yeah. He was on it from the start, by the way. Yeah, you were right about that. He was on it from the start. This man told me, I remember the day, because he was visiting me in Seattle. This, this is my father, by the way, for everyone. He told me on February 20th, I vividly remember again, because he was visiting Seattle only for a couple days. He was like doing his thing on his laptop. And he goes, hey, Sue, this virus is serious. I wouldn't be surprised if the Olympics are canceled. And I was like, shut up. And I was like, no, dad, it's the Olympics. <laughs> Fast forward like two weeks. So it was funny because when people were asking me about that, I had like in my own way kind of already mourned the Olympics. So when it actually happened, I was kind of like, hey, postponing is better than canceling. I was hyped. I was excited. Not just for myself. There's like all these athletes. If you cancel an Olympics, that could be your one shot, right? For like, who knows, like a swimmer, a track, like all these individuals. Yeah. yeah. I feel like team's a little different. So yeah, postponement sounded amazing. There you have it. Dr. Bird in the building. Dr. Bird in the building. You were a viral, yeah. I'm not going to get into that. Next question, please. But you're already old. One more year. Yeah, One I know. More year. Once I retire, I'll be young again. Yes, you will. You'll be yeah. a young retiree. What's up, Britt? BG's here. But now, but now you'll, uh, now you'll be, um, you had said something in the paper about you don't, you don't want to be on the team unless you deserve it. This is true. I mean, why would I want to be on the team if I don't deserve it? Well, I'm assuming you wouldn't be on the team if you didn't deserve it. There you go. So what about, what about the WNBA, mm -hmm. <clears throat> USA basketball, that theoretically – Where are you two going? guards, two guards that if they'd have played this summer, that were going to start in the back court. One's mm -hmm. forty and one's thirty-eight. Sounds like the most experienced team ever. I know. Being devil's advocate, somebody would say, "How come there aren't any young guards out there that can beat you guys?" <laughs> I mean, maybe there will be. I think 
listen, the proof's in the pudding. Everyone has eyeballs. Proof's, the proof's in, the in the pudding. What are you? This what isn't are you, like a. This isn't what like are you a grandmother now. You went no, from Doctor Bird to grandmother Bird. Grandmother. That's not. <laughs> proof's in I'm the just pudding. saying. That's actually a Brian Aglerism. He always says that. No, oh. I just think like there's an eye test. I can't predict the future. I can't tell you what this summer is going to look like for myself. We can leave D out of this. You got her coming on another time, so I'll let her talk. I can't predict what it's going to look like for myself this summer in a year. So what are we basing this on? Predictions? I can't do that. So the proof will be in the pudding. And I think no, in no, the no, past, no, no, no. the proof maybe has I been in the pudding. Maybe I didn't, maybe I didn't, uh, maybe I didn't phrase it properly. I said, what's that say? That even if we'd have played this summer, the two starting guards, one is 40 and the other is 38. What does that say? Either about Oh, about you the young players? I don't think about, anything. Why not? Listen, you're going to make me say this, so I'll just say it about D. You're talking about the greatest of all time. Like, what are yeah. we talking about? Uh, just saying. I'm asking your opinion. I just gave it to you. I, just I think he's the greatest me, of all time. I just wanted you to give me a touch more information than what you were giving me. <laughs> Is that why you keep touching yourself? Yeah, I have an itch. <laughs> touch more here, touch more there. <laughs> I'm trying to scratch it. Mm -hmm. uh, Making you uncomfortable? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm very, very uncomfortable talking about. I'm glad I don't have to coach 40 year old guards. Um, so, yeah, other, right. that was the other question that came up. That was the but, other question that came up that we talked about. Uh, how, how do you think young people today? are responding to what they see when they watch Michael Jordan in his prime? Um, I mean, for a lot, like, it depends how young we're talking about. Um, speaking let's of my say, dad. Let's say people who grew up with Kobe and, and LeBron. Right, right. No, I'm saying for a lot of people, it's the first time they're seeing him. And I think they're in awe. Yeah. I think, first of all, the way the documentary is set up, if you're an athlete, I mean, actually, it doesn't even matter if you're an athlete. You're feeling something. When they're show in the first episode, when they're showing him going against as a, like a rookie, and even his well, maybe it was his third year. They finally got to the, when they first got to the playoffs, right? Second, third year, and he's playing against the Celtics, and he's dropping yeah. like sixty. First of all, they're playing amazing music, so it's like the music. It's like you're into it. You're watching him go crazy on these old players. If that doesn't get you like going, I mean, all these other NBA guys, you can see they tweet about it. They're like, oh, I want to work out so bad right now. This documentary is like motivating people. And I think if you haven't seen a lot of Jordan and you've only seen Kobe and LeBron, you're now seeing where Kobe and LeBron got a lot of their, their swag. Mm -hmm. their, for Kobe, a lot of his game. I mean, he even said it himself, obviously, in the last two episodes. So, yeah, I think they're kind of like, oh, this is what they meant. Right. You know, how right. could you not? I mean, they wear his shoes, so it's, it's only right that they know his story. That actually came up in one of the games. I don't, I don't think they had it on the show where some guy was giving him some guy was giving him grief that that was guarding him in the league. Mm -hmm. And trying oh, yeah. to talk, trying to talk story, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And he said, yo, dude, you're wearing my shoes. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's that's always funny to me when right? people are wearing other people's shoes and what that's right? like. Right. But yeah, uh, I mean, in so many ways, on the floor, off the floor. I mean, last episode was a lot about Jordan and how he didn't get involved politically, didn't get involved in like activism. A lot of it was about that. And it's like, you can argue left and right, not literally left and right. You can argue like up and down <laughs> if he should, if he shouldn't have. But he had to go through a lot on the floor and off the floor. So all and all these other guys got to learn from that. And he kind of had to break down a lot of barriers in a lot of ways or not, right? In this case, he didn't. He kind of stayed out of it. But a lot of guys got to learn from his decisions and the ridicule in that case that he got. So they got to look at it differently. So in a sense, you know, I've actually said this on a couple of shows that I've done. It's like, in a sense, Jordan had to, Jordan walked. So LeBron, Kobe, so on and so forth could run. And it's like that in every sport. There's always a first. And he, and he was the first. The way um, 
You think Diana Taurasi was the female version of Michael Jordan? I don't mean like I don't mean the way, I don't mean the game up in the air over the the that, yeah, yeah. I like mean, a mindset. I don't mean that. I'm talking about mindset. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I think game wise, she's like more magic. Has some Michael, more magic. I think um, mindset very similar. Very similar. She's funnier. She's wittier, but very similar. Yeah, I mean, and, and we talked about the all or nothing type mentality for a lot of athletes. That's D2. It's all or nothing. When she's in, she's in. She's out, she's out. Why she doesn't gamble like that, though. Why do you guys fight all the time? Because we're similar. So that's why we mean you fight. Uh, I just do it to. We got opinions. I, I just do that to humor you. I don't, I don't really fight. I don't <laughs> yeah, really right. fight me. <laughs> humor me uh was there was there a time was there a time in your career as a player uh either college or WNBA where you went into that mode Michael Jordan where, mode where where you if you look back now, you would say, I remember this particular game. I said this, this, and this, or I did this, this, and this. And if people would have been analyzing me, would have went, wow, that's not the Sue that everybody else sees. Well, I mean, the, can you remember most, one? Yeah, because it like just happened. <laughs> so, um, you know, I'm, I'm very, obviously, I don't lose my cool very often. Yeah, I get on the refs now and then. We all do. I don't, like, lose my cool. So I think a lot of people, the first time they saw me do that, like, I'm trying, maybe the first time. I mean, when I tell you I've gotten maybe two technicals, three technicals in my basketball career, in my professional basketball career, I had one in college. We can get to that one in a second. Maybe three. I mean, Maybe. And so I think in game five against Phoenix in the semis, when, and believe me, everyone who's, who's, who's on this, because I know, it probably wasn't a foul. It was the moment. And then Brian January had to do this whole like flip karate thing where I was like, I didn't even touch you. So it made me even more mad. But the way the thing happened, it, like my mask got kind of nudged down. And when that happens, it feels worse to me than it actually is. And it's not to explain it, I, the emotions were high. And I lost my cool. And I was pissed and I went at the ref and my teammates were holding me back and blah, 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 blah. And I think that's the first time people saw me lose my cool. And the next possession, because it was, they ended up calling a jump ball. It was a jump ball. They called a jump ball. Diana will get on here and tell you that um, I, should, I deserved a technical. But like I said, when you only get three in your whole career, I don't think people expect that from you. So I probably got the benefit of the doubt. But the truth was, it was just because of my face. Anyways, you'll talk to her about that. She'll have a whole different side. Should be epic. Yeah. Yes, you will. The next thing, the next play, we win the jump ball. Sammy passes me the ball. I am I don't even know how far away from the basket. I didn't give a shit. That thing was going up, that thing was going in. I did not get I there was and the shot it's not like we had a fresh shot clock. So it's not like I was going I was shooting that regardless. I knew the shot clock was low, but I didn't I, we had time to try to do something. Mm -mm. That thing was going up and it was going in. Have you ever walked into a huddle? and been unlike yourself. Yeah, for sure. But one time that really stands out. Um, it's a lot of games, coach. It's a lot of games. I know. Um, I mean, But, but when people time. act out, when people oh. act out of character, they remember. Not, I don't think I've had that where it's been I think usually when that happens, um, it's when I'm being something has, I've done something bad and I'm like being really hard on myself. And I, and it's like my teammates are almost consoling me because I'm being so hard on myself. That's what's coming to mind. Um, I mean, but I've gotten fights with teammates. There's one, so this has actually come up recently. So it's fresh on my head. I got into it one time with Betty Lennox. This is a true story. And we, <laughs> we were playing in Connecticut. 
we were on a fast break. It was like a two on one. And, you know, this is, I, you know, obviously you never want to name names, but it's years ago. So I, I think Betty ha has gotten over it since. I know I have. But as the story goes, we're on a two on one. If I give you a million dollars, what do you think I would do on a two on one? I have the ball. Pass it. Thank you. So, wrong <laughs> thing. The, the defense, like, never comes to me. So I, I, I'm, I'm surprised. And I'm like, Bleh. I lay it in. That was like my one layup for the season. I lay it in. The team calls timeout. Our, this is actually important. Our bench is on the other side. So I've just laid it in. Betty was the other player running. And I like turn the corner to run back to my bench. And I see Betty like pissed. So pissed where I'm like in my head. I literally look behind me to see who's there. Like, ooh, like who's she? She's yelling. I'm like, who's she yelling at on the other team? Like, ooh, someone's about to get it. And then and when I come back, she's like right in my face. And she basically is pissed that I didn't pass her the ball. So she's all up in arms that I didn't pass her the ball. And she's mad that she ran and I didn't give it to her. Okay. That fight continues all the way to the bench. We sit down. We're still going at it. You know, nothing like, nothing just kind of like, bop -a -da, -ba da And all I kept saying to Betty, I was like, grow up. Just grow up. And she kept getting on me, and she was like, I am grown. You got to You think you're a point guard? You got to pass. And I'm like, grow up. So anyways, Ann Donovan finally had to come in the huddle and just, and like, put a kibosh on it because it wouldn't stop. <laughs> and I don't think that that happens very, that hasn't very happened very much in my career where I'm, like, actively fighting with a teammate. But again, back to what we were saying about Jordan. If you haven't fought with a teammate, like, you're not in it. This is a battle. And, and emotions are high. And, and who knows what happened, you know? Like, who knows what happened? I'm not saying something happened to Betty for that to happen. But, like, who knows what was going on for any of us in any of the moments. And then when you get put in, like, a high emotional situation, stuff happens. Things get said. And you know what? Betty texted me after the game. I texted her back. Then we saw each other. We were like, it's cool. We move on. And that was that. Just another, just another day at the office. What about you? You ever lose your cool? Once in a while. I've heard, I've heard people say that I have. I, I can't remember exactly. What What's the was. most embarrassed you've been when you've lost your cool? When you went home at night and you were like, dang, that was, that was... And, and, and I'm not trying to, you know, it doesn't have to be maybe like, you don't have to tell me what you said or who it was directed at. Although if that plays a, a part by all means, but when you went home at night and you were like, Ugh. uh, I think there's probably been a few times in practice, um, uh, that, that I probably felt that way. And uh, there was one time at, at Rutgers where I felt, yeah. Afterwards, I didn't feel too good about myself. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there there are times when you just react, no mm -hmm. thought involved. And you know the funny part about it is people go, "Wow, that was really well thought out to get that technical there because it really ignited the team." Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like during a timeout, you go, "I got the solution to this game. I'm going to act like an asshole, get a two minute team, mark." And then... <laughs> You got, hey, when we were playing my sophomore year, you got thrown out. That happened. And CD had to finish the game. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was that was at the XL Center. Mm -hmm. we, were we were playing, playing Kentucky. Kentucky. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I remember that. I've seen you at your worst, my friend. That turned the season around. <laughs> yeah, great timing. That was great strategy on my part. Yeah. It's actually true, in a way. Yeah. We were not playing um, well that game. We're almost so, lost. So, so Diana said something about she wants to be an owner yeah. uh, of, of a team. Did, did she necessarily say a WNBA team? Was that what you guys were talking about? I mean, that's what we were talking about. She was, she was, she made a comment about, which is true, that like more women, I mean, you say this too, like more women need to get yeah. involved in women's sports. You know, all that stuff. Yeah, that's the part that, not to interrupt, but that's the part that pisses me off the most, is that I think there's a lot of people out there that are in a position to be able to affect the trajectory of the of these things, whether it's uh, women's basketball, women's soccer, women's softball. It doesn't really matter what the sport is, that 
had the ability and for whatever reason choose not to step up i mean listen i could sit here and i agree i would love for more women to get involved especially the ones you're talking about that can have that have real influence but it's 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 not just one thing all things can be true that's actually a better sure. way of saying it like sure. Why aren't there more women billionaires out there? Why aren't there more women? You know what I'm saying? It's like all things can be true. So, yes, we would love to have more women involved. What I actually missed an opportunity to shout out my team because my team does have women owners. Mm -hmm. We do have three women who own our team. And there are other female owners in our league. Um, but, yeah, that's what Diana was talking about, just getting more women involved. And that's when she made the statement. So I'm assuming she was talking about women's sports teams, not, not men's, for herself. But I mean, she's always been like that. That's always been, she, and I tried to get it in there. Like she doesn't want to rebound. She looks at coaching as rebounding. She like makes this connection to it. She's like, I'm not trying to rebound for anybody. <laughs> so she wants to own it. But to her, like that's her mindset. She, she said it, she wants to be in the suite, watching the game and like, this is my team. Yeah. Yeah. She wants to be Pat Riley actually. No, without, but without he's, the coaching. Without the coaching part. Well, yeah, but what is he? I don't know if he's like the GM or the president. I think he's involved in the team, but I think. No, he is. he's He's like the front office. But that's what I, mean. I think but she I, wants to like not answer to anyone. But my, my point is. That's the point. He, he, he was a good player. He was a great coach. He won titles. He has the respect of every single player in the NBA. So if Pat Riley said something, every, says something, everybody goes, ooh. I think that's who Dee would love to be. The person sitting there that everyone, when she opens her mouth, goes, They already if do they that. said it, it must be true. They nah. already do that. Yeah, yeah they, they already might do say that. It now because they got to put up with her crap on the court. But once she nah, stops playing, they I want to hear it. But that's hey, my point. I don't think she wants, like, Pat Riley still has the answer to his owners. She's not yeah, trying to answer to anybody. Yeah, I know. I get that. And I don't I think that's that. a, I'm not, that's not a, a diss on her. Do you that's remember like, that time in Las Vegas? Do you remember the time in Las Vegas during training camp? When you guys, you guys were bitching. When I about drafted something. the winning team. Yeah, you guys were bitching about something. So I wanted, to, I wanted you to bring this up because Diana might be. A <laughs> you owner. just brought it up. <laughs> I know. I, I wanted you to bring that part up. Of course, I drafted the team that won. Of course, I knew that was coming. But it, am I? Is it true? I remember you guys were bitching. Is it about true? Something. This team you won. You guys were. Let me finish. You guys were bitching about something. So I said, okay, why don't you guys pick the team and you guys coach the team. And we, didn't co we didn't coach. No, 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 no. We didn't coach. Well. No, no, no. We didn't coach. We were on those benches. We didn't coach. We cheered. You didn't coach? You, got, you guys were running around being like. George we were Steinberg. excited for. Our, you, that's what, that's, that must be what it feels like when you are a GM. You or guys fired. You guys wins. fired the coaches. You guys fired the coaches like three times during that training. Camp. No, we sat on the bench, <laughs> like a good owner does, like a good GM does, and we put pressure on the coach to win, and that's what happened. No, we were no, no we did not coach. That is so. Just, tell that's tell not everybody, coach. tell everybody how I let you guys pick the teams and then scrimmage, mm -hmm. and how you mm -hmm. and D were fighting over draft picks and why your team won. Well, you. You just told the story. So he let no, us. Pick his... no, I can't. I rem... What I remember is it went like whoever had first pick then had two and the next person had two and three. And then yeah. whoever got first got fourth. And then from there yeah. we went straight up. Right. And I actually don't remember the true story. I don't remember like who went where, when, why, and what. But I know my first pick. I don't remember if I had pick number one or if I had the two, three. That's what I don't remember. With the first pick that I had, though, I took Courtney Vandersloot. Courtney Slew was balling that camp. Yeah. Like, killing. And me and just for the, me and D were hurt. So we both, like, I had just had, or I was just coming off my knee surgery. And I think she, like, maybe broke her wrist. So we were both hurt. So that's why we weren't playing. And I took Slew. And Slew, like, single handedly, like, led our team to the victory. But I, like, truth, I, I swear, I'm, like, not trying to, I don't remember. I don't even remember who else was in the camp. You you know what I remember, Sue? Because we were at, we were in Vegas a lot <laughs> for camps. I remember I remember. Here's what I remember. I remember D picking her team, swearing she had the best team. Then when your team kicked her ass, bitching that they weren't coached well. <laughs> <laughs> I remember her. 
I remember her, this, okay, what you just said, but the last thing I remember is like, well, we, no, we reset the, the quarters every quarter. And so if you were to do the lump sum of the scores, I was like. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you the other thing I remember. Stewie was still in college. Stewie was there? She's like, I don't remember Stewie being there. Yeah, Stewie was still in college. Bean pole, probably. She was like, she was this, like this, the third or fourth big. person. Yeah, but she was like the third or fourth player picked. So everybody I mean, already knew, even back then. Yeah. What do you mean? You have to be blind. Still, she was still a junior in college and was picked like third or fourth ahead of all those NBA, WNBA players. That's how good she Probably was. Probably because there was then. two UConn GMs running the show. Uh, what time is it anyway? We're getting close. I don't know when we actually got on though. We can ask people. People, when did we get on? Terrible choice for USA basketball not to let Sloot think she had a chance. I actually don't know if that's true. There's, I think, I don't think that's entirely true. Yeah, there was a lot. She of ended up getting a passport, which is like a very viable business yeah. decision. Listen. People want to comment on who was on the team, who wasn't on the team, who made the team, who didn't make the team. There's a lot of things that go into it. 20 ish. All right, we have like 10 minutes ish. That are happening behind the scenes that you don't get to see. So it's not always about what you think it's about. So oh, relax, I mean, you comment, people. Isn't the last dance just absolute proof of that? That's right. That's right. That's yeah. right. Uh, who was. Uh, I mean, we could go the last 10 minutes. We could talk about, like, I hate talking about politics and stuff. I thought this was a politic-free zone. Huh? Say that again? I thought this was a politic-free zone. I know. That's why I don't want to talk about it, because I don't want to make <laughs> this. I don't want to. I don't, we can talk about whatever you want. No, I don't want to go into, I don't want to go into all that. BG um, wants you to send her some wine. Who does? BG wants you to send her some wine. Yo, hit him in the DM. Give him your address. Let's she go. Went to, she went to school at Baylor. What the hell does she know about great wine? What does that have to do with anything? You know, this is where college coaches, you guys just can't <laughs> let go. Just let it go. It's supposed to be, see, that's the difference between you and everybody else. It's supposed to be a funny comment. Right away, you go and attack we well, do it all the time. We like do it all you the time. college coaches. You know why? Because college coaches are always looking at you guys and going, you know what? You guys don't get it. You don't know how what? hard it is. You literally are like, you don't know how hand. hard it is to coach. You're just guys stuck in the same four year cycle. You just Be repeat quiet. your four year cycle. Be quiet. Come Anyways, on. ask a question. You felt like you had something to say. In Texas, BG would have had to like get a, a special license to drink. Uh, BG just said you didn't. BG just said you tea. didn't want her. BG huh? just said you didn't want her. That's a lie. Now, all right, BG. That's you're a on lie. the queue now. You're, she knows you're, it's a lie. After D, you're on Coach's show. I'm like giving you a lineup. She's like she's she's all out. she's all about she's she was all about. I gotta save the rapid fire for when he comes on my show. I'm staying home. Minutes. I'm staying close to home. I'm staying close to home. Are you refilling? Was that a refill I just heard? No, no refills yet. I have to wait till I get off. I don't want people to get the wrong impression. Um, <clears throat> so the question I was the question I was going to ask is uh, going beyond basketball. Mm -hmm. You, you got it. You got to think that it's getting close to the end. You know, you're like you're you only got a couple of holes left. And uh, uh, you think? <laughs> yeah, I think. I think. I think you got a couple left. Um, <clears throat> um, you've been. You've been. You've been pretty. Um, you've been pretty active uh -huh. in a lot of in a lot of areas outside basketball. Uh huh. Is that where you think your future is going to take you? Into politics? activism, no, not politics. Just being an activist, more so on a full-time basis, as opposed to 
you know, being part time because you have a, a job, a, a day yeah. job? Um, I think it is once you kind of open your eyes to certain things or have your eyes open. Cuts you off hey. in an hour. Hey, I'm a fast learner. It took me like 30 seconds. Good job. Okay. Or should I say what, what you used to say to us in college? Attaboy. What I do you want? Attaboy? That. Yeah, you did. Ask CD. I'm not even going to get into it. I never said attaboy. Yeah, ask CD. Because you said it. You were like, oh, what do you guys want? Attaboys? I never said attaboy. And I attaboy. looked at CD and I was like, what's an attaboy? Because in that sentence, it, like, I didn't catch it. I and never she was said like, attaboy. Attaboy. You make Chris! stuff up, man. Chris? You make stuff up. You make stuff up. Back check, Chris. You make you make stuff up, man. Ask her. I don't know how Megan puts up with your crap. Ask you make her. stuff up. Ask uh, her. All Why right. You an hour. You got to like monitor these things. I asked you guys to tell me when it was ending, and nobody said boo. There's no like countdown clock. You have to be like aware of it. Well, I was so enthralled with what you were saying. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, so finish what you were saying. Um, oh, uh, yeah. So last thought on it. I think um, like as a gay athlete, you realize, I mean, honestly, it has nothing to do with just me being gay. Like I'm a lot of things and everybody is a lot of things. But it is when somebody outside of that supports you. A lot of people use the word ally. It's used a lot. And I don't want to, like, just throw it around. But it is important. You know, like, even, like, Kobe Bryant, the way he ha ha was, was starting to get involved in women's basketball, that mattered, and it was going to matter. It matters when people that, you know, don't look like you, aren't interested in the same things as you, don't, you know, do what you do, whatever it is. When they support you, it matters. And I feel like I want to be that if I can, where, where it makes sense for me. So that stuff, it's never going to stop, no matter what I end up doing. Um, I don't know what I'm going to be when I'm done, but I'm sure that'll always be there. Hmm. I'm sure it will. I'm sure it will. So who's your white team All-American? I asked Mike this last night. White team All-American. Who's the best white team player you ever had? Because um, we got to do a, a top five. Best white ever? Top five, if you can name them. Best ever. Top five. Uh, I'll tell you, Heather Buck was one of them. White Team All-American? Okay. Yeah. I yeah. thought Big Rig starting at the center. Yeah, Big Rig was good. Oh. I have a picture from Philadelphia, you jumping up in her arms when we won the whole thing. She was good. And you know, it's sad because she got to Connecticut thinking, not sad, that's not the right word. She got to Connecticut being like, oh, they just had Rebecca Lobo and Kara Walters. This is their style. And then she got there with my class at the same time. And then we became like play 10 people zone. I mean, what am I talking about? Play 10 people, press, trap, constant subs. And it just like didn't fit her game. But she would kill us in pickup. Kill us in practice. Yeah. White team All-American. She was. She was. Look, Kevin just said, Heather was incredible. Used to wreck Tina on the regular. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. White team is, is the non-starters. Yeah. For yeah, those that don't know. I guess that's something that we should remind people of. Yeah. Anyway. I thought that was a funny uh, question. <laughs> I need more water. 
Well, what's up? Quick, quick, quick question. What's life? Mm -hmm. What's life like? Living in an in an apartment building. Mm -hmm. when you're like surrounded by a lot of people. What do you mean? I mean. I thought you were going to say during the pandemic. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. Oh. That's uh... what I mean. And, and, and you really, like, what are you going to do? Go out and like hang out and like, what are you going to do? Like invite people over for, and, go outside and sit six feet apart in your yard? Like, what, it, like, what do you do? I mean, I have major, like, like, backyard FOMO. When I go on Instagram or whatever, and people are, like, posting themselves in their pool or, like, in their, yeah. like, you know, acre of land, I'm like, ugh. <laughs> but, I, yeah, it has its perks. It has its perks. Um, I mean... I think we do want to get back to, out to Seattle eventually. Right now we're just trying to find the right time to fly because that's more like home. It's a bigger apartment. It's still in a building. Um, but like, because we're, you know, where we are, there's, there's actually a lot to do outside. Uh, my sister's not far from here. They're kind of in our little like quarantine bubble. They don't leave their house. They get everything delivered. Do not leave their house. We don't either, except we do go to the grocery store. Deliveries around here is hard to come by. Um, and my sister's able to do like bulk. We can't really do that. We don't, we're not going to eat it fast enough, but I'm not familiar. Anyways, so we're able to go over there. We just play in the yard with the kids. It's actually like a social distance situation, but we still are able to go over there. So we get out. Like it's not, it's actually, I miss it because I think it would be, I miss a yard and a pool because that would be nice right now, but it's cool. When the, when the restaurants open up, are you going to go? I mean, probably not. And And honestly... Not necessarily because I'm scared or because I'm like, I know I gave that whole doorknob story earlier. It's not that there's an element of that. It's more so. And this is what my friend Mike said the other day. It's like, do I really want to go to a restaurant that has 25% capacity and everybody's wearing a mask and there's like plexiglass between like me and who I'm with and the server and all. It's like, that's not what you go to restaurants for the experience. Um, so if that's not there, I don't know. Like, why, why, why go? That's yeah. my take. Um, yeah. But as an investor, I know you are as well. As an investor in restaurants, like, this is a tough time. So they need to start opening. I, I respect that from a business standpoint. Um, but I mean, the big question marks are around safety now anyways. Is it safe? Are we opening up too soon? I don't think we're going to, I don't think, I don't think we're going to open up when they first say we're going to open up. Connecticut or... No, Cafe R. You know, your favorite. Oh, oh you guys. You came over. Right, right, right. All right. What, you loved, what did you think of our place? <laughs> you just want to hear compliments? Yeah. Um, it was great. It's great. It's got a great vibe. Like, ambiance is great. Um, the food was, was really good as well. Um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, to me, again, I just said it. To me, it's the vibe of a place. Like, truthfully, I hate when a restaurant is, like, well lit. I like a dim restaurant. And I like to feel like I'm kind of like, I don't know. I was going to say like in a scene. It's not, that's not the right word. Just, it has to have the right vibe. And you guys definitely have a great vibe. Yeah. That's what I like about it too. It's, it's, and, and it's, it's difficult to imagine, you know, like you're saying, uh, you can't sit at the bar. Like, yeah, you know, uh, it, it's just, uh, Ugh. Uh, do you think people will ever go to the store or they just sit at home and order on Amazon? <laughs> no, I think, all right, this is going back to my doorknob story. I think once medicine and vaccines are like a thing, everything will start to loosen up. Everyone will start to relax. You probably shake hands. The, que the thing is, I don't know when that's going to be until that happens. This all like, kind of like quarter opening, half opening, it's going to be awkward. Yeah. So no, people will probably choose. What's interesting about this pandemic um, is people probably have realized like, 
oh, I actually can work from home. Or I actually can do this, this, and that from home. I actually can just order things ahead of time from home. But there's going to come days where you're going to need something fast and now. I don't know. Like maybe you need, I don't know, your kid has an allergic reaction. you got to go to CVS now. I mean, that's still open, but you get my, my analogy. So you, people will start to get out. You have your mask? Yeah. White, black, what color? I've got a variety of colors. I've got oh, some, some, my, my sister's husband uh, used to be a doctor. So he had some extra like medical masks. So I, I, right? yeah, I took a couple of those, just like one or two of them. Um, yeah, the ones I have are cloth. I ordered them. Actually, the WMBPA made some like bet on women masks. That's kind of like our tagline. So I have some of those. Um, Breaking Tea actually did it. They're pretty cool. So yeah, I'm masked up. You just have to like wa wash them in hot water. And you're good to go or let them sit there for a couple weeks if, if that's your jam we literally don't go out until we go to the grocery store which is like once every 10 days yeah, yeah there's no real i stopped at the gas station today to see my friend he's you have a friend at the gas station yeah he's uh <laughs> he's he's iranian and he's 80 years old and he was talking about you guys shouldn't you know, be hanging out Huh? I have to talk to you like I talk to my parents. Why are you hanging out with people? I'm not. I'm getting gas. Okay. Do you have a mask on? Yeah, I have a mask. Let me see it. Well, I don't have it on me right now. I don't need it right now. I'm home. Well, I know you don't need it right now, but. I have so one. You... Okay. I have a black one and I have a white one. Mm -hmm. I just don't want to look like a bank robber when I walk in, you know? Like, I got to be careful. That's the law. You have to wear it. I know, I know. But anyway, what I'm saying is, uh, th th this this guy, he was talking about li growing up in Iran, and he's 80, so he's a little bit older than me. And when he was a kid, he said, there were lots, there were like months and months and that where this was a way of life for them. Where like, they had nothing, 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 nothing. Mm -hmm. And for us, it's just so strange. It's just so, but there's a lot of people in the world, like, this is kind of a lot of this is their reality, you know, like they can't get food, they can't go out, they can't interact, they can't like it's just it's just so weird that it's happening here, you know. It's almost like nine eleven. When nine eleven happened, I remember going down to the New York City to go to a show. And I remember driving uh, and and on every street corner there were four uh four National Guard and they were armed with like submachine guns and stuff, and you're like this is like being in a third world country. You know, it's, it, you just don't expect that here. That's what's made it so crazy for everybody. But yeah. it is what it is, you know? I mean, I joke that when you play overseas, you, it like prepared you for this in some yeah. bizarre way. Yeah. I've said this like numerous. It's like, we would go to the store and just be fully prepared. There was just no expectations that they would have chicken. Right. And you just like, okay, I'll get fish or okay, I'll eat whatever tonight. And that is how other countries um, operate. What I'm explaining is not third world at all. Right. At all. But expectations are different in different places. And I mean, that's what has made our country so amazing to live in is that we've had all of this basically at our fingertips at all times. And that's what makes this such a shock, I think, to everybody. But not, not to WBA players. We've been ready. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, it's 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 different, you know. Uh, it's yeah, I'm 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 afraid it's going to be a long, long time before we get back to anything similar to what we knew. It's going to be a long time, you know. These people that think, oh, by June, you know, we're going to be fine. By July, we're going to be fine. I don't think so. I, don't think I, so. I mean, what's fine? I don't think we're going to be back. To, I don't think whatever you considered normal. It's yeah. going to feel like that for maybe ever. For a long time. You know how like 9-11 changed the way we travel? Mm -hmm. And it never, it never went it back. back. No, it it's only gotten back. And, like and it's worse, like, but better. And it's like, we knew three years ago, four years ago. We knew 10 years ago, maybe. Nobody's ever going to blow up a plane anymore. They already did that, done that. They're moving on to the next thing, you know? But yet we still have to go through all the security to get on a plane. That ain't never changed. And there's things that are happening right now. 
We're never going back from these things. Sorry, I'm laughing because Brad's on here. He goes, when can I golf with a cart? Yo, in Connecticut, coach is saying they got their own carts. Hell yeah, man. We got a couple places. Now, my place where I belong. I'm like, are you just breaking clubs, the law? We have to walk. Oh, okay. Which I don't mind. It's just, you know, after about four or five holes, I I make a left. I'm, I'm out of there. I can't. I can't you can't walk it? My, my <laughs> knees hurt too much. I can't walk longer than four or five holes. That's Especially funny. if I don't have a drink in my hand. Um, <laughs> so, anyway. Uh, I'm going to go have some dinner. What are you having for dinner? I don't know yet. My, my chef has stepped out, so I'm just waiting for her to return. Yeah? And then we'll figure it out. Yeah, she had she had a call to take, so she's on the phone outside. That's why uh -huh. she's been quiet. Usually she's banging around. Uh-huh. So, yeah, man, it's good to see you. Glad you're doing well. Good to see you guys, too. It's hanging to in there you. like everyone else. Yeah, well... I'm hoping that uh, well, you guys will be you guys won't be around, but if you're still around, mm -hmm. when when school starts? Oh, oh, what do you mean, like uh, August, September? Yeah, you have to come up and work out. That'll be your workout place. It's too far. <laughs> So what? If I don't have a workout place by then, this, hey, oh, I told you, you my sister got a hoop. Be, if you don't want to run around and guard young, fresh legs, then you don't have to. Stay down there where you are and I live in your I virtual my basketball. <laughs> I know when to save my energy. Yeah. yeah. I don't need to like, get picked up full court because they're trying to impress you. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I got you. I got you. I don't want to ruin the practice either. Like, yeah, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're, you're ruining it. You're ruining it. We didn't even get into how you think Crystal and Megan are going to do. I actually feel bad for kids who got drafted this year. Like, I feel uncomfortable with how the season is happening. Not happening. I can't imagine being a rookie and going through that. Well, you know what I was thinking the other day? Imagine being a high school senior. Mm -hmm. And your season was canceled right before the state championship. Mm -hmm. And then you go, what's well, okay? Well, you know, now you don't have like high school graduation. That's a big deal for a lot of kids or, yeah. or the prom, you know, that's yeah. a big deal. Yeah. And then going to summer school. Hey, the first time I'm going to be hanging around with my new team, my new coaches, but all of a sudden that's gone. Yeah. Everything that you were looking forward to, because most seniors, you know, they're just like, um, they're just buying time. They're like sleepwalking through the last five months of their high school. Oh, know? like in class and stuff? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? They're just yeah, no, dying. those are like big moments. Big, big moments. moments. You remember forever. And yeah, it's huge. very sad. It, it, it's just That's why stuff. we had a prom night theme on our show, A Touch More. I'll have to think of a good theme when you come on. Is there like a grandpa day? Is that like a thing? Um, no, there can be. <laughs> Uh, Anyways, what are you having for dinner? What's Mrs. A, a cooking up? This Tell her I said hi. This could be a bourbon day. Um, let's see. We've had just about a little bit of everything every night, so. Uh, Mixing what's, it up? What's I suggest tonight? you guys get an Instant Pot. I'm an Instant Pot. Like, if they want to sign a deal with me right now, sign me up. That thing is amazing. What? Instant Pot. Just look it up. No, I'm just going to drink. I'm just going to eat. You're just going to liquid diet? <laughs> that's, where the, that's where the a touch more comes from. Just gonna, a touch little, more? Little, little tip. Yeah, well, mine's a big touch. <laughs> you, you, you got a big I hand. wasn't going to say it. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go eat. Okay, good to see you. All right. Thanks for having me. Bye.